Okay, so when we talk about inequalities, we talk about different signs and recognizing what they actually mean. So the symbol, I always try and remember, if it's in the shape of an L, that means less than. And if it's got an L with a little stroke underneath it, that means less than or equal to. If it's not in the shape of the L, if it's in the shape of this symbol here, like it is, that is greater than. So you can see here, X is greater than four. Okay, so it could be five, six, seven, eight, 4.5, any of those things there. Greater than or equal to then, again, has a little, little line underneath it. Less than in the shape of an L and less than or equal to. Keywords that we'll be looking at are obviously an inequality and when they come into play. We'll be looking at specific real life situations where we're dealing with inequalities and you have to be in between a measure or in between a certain amount. Our old favourites are back, natural number, integer and real number. So we'll be going through all of those. But to remind ourselves, the natural number, the symbol is N. The integer symbol is Z and the real number symbol is OR. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at reading inequalities. And the question we're faced with here is to state whether the following inequalities are true or false. So we have five is greater than three. So that is true. 10 is less than five. So that is false. Minus five is greater than minus six. And that's true on the number line. And the last one, minus 10 is less than minus 11. And that one is false. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at reading them and then we're going to bring in the algebra to it. So we spoke about natural numbers before and a natural number is any positive whole number. Okay, the symbol for natural number is N. And if I ask you to draw an inequality, so an inequality expression like this, where X is greater than or equal to one, and I ask you to draw it on the number line, you use dots to show that, to show that it only counts for one, two, three, four, and five. And so this here, we're told X is greater than or equal to one, and you can see, well, the first number could be, would be one, two, three, four, five. So natural numbers, the symbol is N, they're positive whole numbers, and you use dots on your number line. They're the three biggest things to remember there. The next one is Z, your integers, and your integers are any negative or positive whole number. And again, we can see it here, this is written as X is an element of Z, the integers. And as integers are also whole numbers, in order to graph them on the number line, we use dots as well. The last thing we're going to look at then is real numbers. And as we know, real numbers can be positive, negative, neutral, whole numbers, decimals or fractions. They encompass all numbers. These numbers always are referred to by OR for real numbers. But if we're given a situation where we have to graph or show the solution on the number line with relation to OR. It's a little different to the N's and Z's. The N's and Z's were just dots because we had clear, specific answers, minus two, minus three, minus four, uh, one, two, three, four. They moved in solid uh, repetition, but with OR, it's not the case. So if I am asked to draw the inequality, X is less than or equal to one when X is an element of OR. It's just a little bit different. I'm gonna draw my number line as normal. So x is less than or equal to 1. Now we know the or encompass fractions, decimals, uh, percentages, all of that, positive and negative. So if I have my number line here, and try and make your number lines as neatly as possible. You can see here x is less than or equal to 1. So the first number it could be is anything less than one. So here is one on my number line, but it can be really, really close. It can be 0 0.99999, because again, that is a member of the real numbers, but less than one. So what we say is we put a circle around it and we say it gets really, really close to one, but it never actually reaches one. And so we leave the circle blank. And then we show, we draw a big thick red line showing, well, X is less than one. That can be any number along here that satisfies it. And then to show that it continues on, we just draw an arrow at the end. 
So if it gets really, really close to a number but it doesn't hit the number, it is an empty circle. Well, you can see here, this one says x is less than or equal to 1. So if it's less than or equal to 1, it means it can be 1, which means we fill in our circle, as so. Here we have another example where x is less than 4, and x is an element of, num of the ors. So it's less than 4, so the first number it can be is 3.999, which means we leave the circle empty at 4 and we draw our thick red line showing there can be any value underneath that. Okay, the last example then, draw a number line to show the following inequality, where x is less than 1, but x is an element of z. And remember, z is your integers, so it is any positive and negative whole number. So, a nice clear number line. Mark in x is less than 1. So, if it is less than 1, the first number it can be is 0. So, I'm going to place a dot at 0. It can also be minus 1, that will satisfy that inequality, as does minus 2, as does minus 3. Is minus 3 less than 1? It is. And to show that any integer after 0 satisfies this inequality, we draw just an arrow to show that it goes on that way. So we leave dots here because it doesn't include any part in the middle as an integer is a whole number, negative or positive. Okay, and the learning check, state whether each of the following are true or false. And number two, draw separate number lines to show the following inequalities. And here, x is an element of z. So think about what z means and how you represent that.